us your first thoughts on scripture. Hello, everyone, and welcome to not a Monday check-in, but to first thoughts. We're changing our branding. We're going to start calling this podcast the First Thoughts Podcast, um, and we'd love to hear your first thoughts about that. So, so let us know. No, um, it's part of a larger thing. We can explain this to you, I suppose. Sure. Um, we're creating a website where we're going to host all the digital resources that First Presbyterian Church of Hastings has produced over the years, uh, which now number uh, in the hundreds. Uh, we have about four hundred. Uh, digital resources that includes about 150 of the podcasts of the Monday check-in but uh, the purpose of this website will be for other churches to be able to have access to these resources to use for adult ed classes or for maybe a solo rural pastor to have something to be able to do sermon prep like Damon and I do together with you uh, on Monday mornings and we thought Monday check-in wasn't a very particularly descriptive uh, descriptor well the problem is that it was very descriptive but it's descriptive for a different context and setting and situation. Correct. Right. We started doing this in the when we and when everything got shut down during the pandemic. Yeah, March thirtieth, twenty twenty, was our first one, and it was exactly that. It was a Monday check in. We were checking check-in. in with yep. our people, um, and we would tell them about what was happening in the church, updates on COVID stuff, and then we would do a short Bible study. Mm-hmm. And then we flip flopped and started with the short Bible study thinking ahead that eventually we were going to be editing these to just have the Bible study, Mm -hmm. but we still called it the Monday check-in. But now that we're getting this website uh, moving, uh, our crack team of marketers and smart people said, Monday check-in probably is not what you want to use the name for your podcast. Yeah, we decided to finally consult with some smart people. And I think it's going to make a difference, you know? So that's good. Yeah. So effectively, though, if a person has been listening to the Monday check-in, effectively, it makes nothing changes other than the name. We're still going to do a Bible study. We'll still then switch gears and talk about the the life of the church. It's it's all, um, it's all the same. It's just a it's just a different name. So indeed. So welcome to first thoughts. Those are our first thoughts on first thoughts. Yes, and each week we uh, when it's listed, it'll be first thoughts on whatever the scripture is, which in this week, in this case, it's Isaiah 5 and Isaiah 11. But that's just a little little behind the scenes how the sausage is made for uh, our very loyal seven or eight listeners. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, then I think that it's probably time uh, to dive into this scripture. And I think it's probably time to have an opening prayer. Yeah. Uh, is that me? I think it's you. Okay, let's pray. Let's pray. Loving and gracious God. Thank you for your word and the many different ways that it comes to us as we begin this week, as we open your text once more, ask that our hearts, that our eyes, our ears, our very selves might be opened to your holy word and to your wisdom. In your gracious and loving name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, this coming Sunday, following the narrative lectionary, We are now in Isaiah. Correct. Isaiah, we're going to take a little bit of a reading from Isaiah 5 and also Isaiah 11. Do you want me just to read it or do you want to say something about Isaiah first? Uh, No, you can just read it. Okay, all right, I'll read it. So this is Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 through 7, and then chapter 11 verses 1 through 5. And it reads something like this. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do with my vineyard. This is where the love song takes a weird turn. I will remove its hedge. 
and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall not be overgrown, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. And that's the ending of the section from chapter 5. And then to chapter 11, verses 1 through 5. A shoot, shall come, a shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. That's where we stop. Greg, what do you got? Uh, these are some interesting passages. The Isaiah 11 is one that we have probably heard before that might ring familiar to our ears. Specifically, a shoot shall come out of the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, Spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, and might, Spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. Because it is one that we often read during the season of Advent. There are even hymns written about this particular song. Yeah, we've turned it into an Advent. Well, we've turned it into a messianic Reading. prophecy, um, right? Yeah, well, we've turned it into a messianic prophecy about Jesus. About Jesus, about our understanding of the Messiah as mm -hmm. Christians, correct. <clears throat> so that one may be familiar. The Isaiah 5 passage is probably not familiar to most of our readers uh, and listeners. Uh, I'll be very honest with you, it wasn't terribly familiar to me. I think, I think we brushed on it in Old Testament class back when I was in seminary. Uh, yeah. But it, it didn't stick with me. Um, it is a lot of relatively familiar imagery, though. Like, that, there's a lot of vine vineyards. I mean, one of the things that I thought while I was reading it, um, because it has this feel of, okay, now everyone sit down and let me tell you a story. Oh, it's a parable. And it sounds like the bard like is about to, like, I'm going to sing you a tale and it's going to turn teach you a lesson. At the end of it, right? Or, or maybe a, Jesus telling a parable. And it's but a parable. Part, which, yeah. And so then my thought was, this feels very Jesus-y. Uh -huh. And then my, my second corrective thought was, oh, maybe Jesus actually feels Isaiah-y. And we know that Jesus knew his, his Old Testament. Right. Right? I mean, yeah. And so is it any surprise that oftentimes when Jesus is... is telling a parable, it hearkens to or reflects something from the Old Testament. It shouldn't surprise us at all. No, it shouldn't. But I just, I had to, like, flip it. Right? Yes, Cause it's, absolutely. Because the temptation, right, for, for us is to say, oh, like, this, this feels, this feels Jesus-y. Mm -hmm. um, and not to think, oh, no, Jesus feels Isaiah-y. Yes. That's how... <laughs> Maybe or they all, they're all swimming in the same pool, so it makes sense for them to kind of sound like each other, I guess. Yeah, that's well said, and it's interesting too because I mean this so closely follows the pattern of uh, a parable, uh, and then there are a few parables where Jesus actually goes and explains what mm -hmm. he means, right? Yeah. And in this case, Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, explains, this is who this is, this is what this is, and this is what it means. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just interesting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it's, I mean, and we get lots of parables, the sowers, and uh, there's always folks coming out to work the vineyards um, in parables and that sort of thing. It's, this is framed as a love song. Which is interesting, well, right? It's not. I'm not now. I'm going to teach you a parable. 
And I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to sing a love song right now. Yeah. Well, to me, it harkens back to, uh, to your sermon yesterday on Hosea mm-hmm. and the idea of a, of a, a loving parent um, pleading with a child. Yeah. Right? And so, um, and, and it's interesting, the, the way that the, the, <laughs> the pronouns shift back and forth <clears throat> from me and my to you and yeah. yours, uh, because it be, begins, I assume, in the, in, the, in the voice of the prophet Isaiah, let me sing for my beloved God, I think, my love song concerning God's vineyard. Mm-hmm. So it starts with the Isaiah saying, I'm singing a love song to God. Yeah. Right? Maybe. To the maker of the vineyard. <laughs> uh, yeah. And he says, my beloved God had a vineyard on a very mm-hmm. fertile hill. He dug it. He cleared it of stones. This is all the work that God does with God's people. He planted yeah. it with choice vines, built a watchtower in the midst of it, hewed a wine vat in it, and expected it to yield grapes. Mm-hmm. So God does all this work on us and for us and through us and expects us to yield good fruit because of the work God is doing on us and for us and through us. Yeah. Yes. But instead it yielded wild grapes and what you all probably know, but uh, is helpful to know wild grapes are not good for anything. They're not good for wine making. They're not good for food. They're, they're useless. Yeah. Um, They're more than useless. They're a waste because you've now poured energy into trying to care for a field and what you're getting. So you've lost the energy that you've put into it, the water and the fertilizer and all that stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Right. And so then the love song turns and now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, let me tell you what this means. Judge between me and my vineyard. Yeah. So it changes to the and voice of the- God because it's now my vineyard. Right. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it. God is pleading with his people. God, what more can I have done to teach you how to be my people? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. My The very first question that I wrote down was who is singing? Right. Because it starts it's out. It's confusing. It right. It starts confusing in my opinion. It starts confusing. <laughs> and I think it's Isaiah singing a love song to God. Mm-hmm. But then God takes over and starts singing or speaking mm-hmm. in the voice. Right? Yeah. When I expected it to yield grapes. Like I put all this work into you and I expect you to live fruitful lives. Why are you yielding wild grapes instead? Yeah. And not just grapes, but like a particular kind of grape. Yeah. Right. Um, the uh, particular vines were chosen and planted. Choice and, vines. Yeah. Choice, choice vines. vines in the NRSV. The, the Common English Bible uses, right um, I know, but I thought I wrote it down. I wouldn't have to read it and look it up. Good. Uh, grapes. Expected it to yield good grapes. I think excellent vines, I think is what it uses. Let me just find it. Where are we? Yeah, planted it with excellent vines. But, and then it yields not wild grapes, but rotten grapes. Oh, that's the CEB says rotten grapes. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, and expected it to grow good grapes, uh, but it grew rotten grapes instead. But and that to me reminded me of there are I think often many examples of God being upset about things not doing what they are supposed to do. Right. Right. Uh, and Jesus echoes this. Uh, he gets mad at a fig tree because it's not producing any figs or, or whatever the case um, but this this sort of sense of the people have a particular call a purpose yeah yeah uh, to do a particular thing and they're not doing that thing and that is frustrating to God right and so then God um, God goes for it here's what I'm gonna do now Mm-hmm. I'm going to tear down its hedge, and it's going to be devoured. I'll break down its wall. It's going to be trampled. I'll make it a waste. I'm going to stop tending to it. It's going to be overgrown with briars and thorns. I'm going to tell the rain not to rain. Yeah. 
Which is all part of the love song. <laughs> Which presents a particular... And I think certainly there are... I think there are certainly plenty of times where we can think of a, a disciplinary or a corrective act as being a loving act. Right. Right. That... Um, but yeah... It's interesting. Yeah. I also wondered um, if, if we have a vineyard that's producing rotten grapes, the, the feeling that I got of, and now I'm just, we're going to take down these hedges and, and just like people are just going to come rushing through, right? That there are just masses of people standing outside of it, just like trying to get in, try, like mm. pressing upon it. It felt sort of like um, that God has somehow managed to create this within this within some sort of really densely compact metropolis, this little square block of sanctuary, hmm. right? The, like I'm picturing just this peaceful garden in the midst of just this constant rush and hum of chaos and. And it's God that's keeping the chaos out. Um, <laughs> but if God chooses, like, we're just, okay, we're just going to open the good, and just just hordes of people are going to come through, right? And and wipe this away. Yeah. And this is, I assume the prophet is is foreseeing. Is this Assyria that the prophet is foreseeing? I believe so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and interestingly, the narrative lectionary cuts it off in seven. Um, Mm -hmm. There's, there's more helpful context after that. I think there is. What comes next is in the CEB. It's the doom sayings. Right. I think in the NRSV they might be the woe. Yeah, saying like woe to those who, um, and they are also they're very much related to this core metaphor. Right. right? So in the C, it's doom to those who acquire house after house, like who get land after land after land, who annex more. Um, and don't live in them, just to have them, just to have accumulated that, and it's land, so it's wealth, and it's power, mm -hmm. right, uh, in the area, and doomed to those who wake up early in the morning <laughs> to run after beer, to those who stay up late, lit up by wine, uh, they, they party and carry on, but they ignore the Lord's work, they can't see what God is doing, right, mm-hmm. So it's about that's yeah. about selfishness. It's about turning in words and, and eating and drinking and being merry instead of caring for those around you. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, those are the rotten grapes, mm -hmm. right? Of the, the yeah, that's the rotten fruit mm -hmm. that's produced after God has done all this work to cultivate and till good fruit, and instead, the vineyard, God's people, are producing rotten fruit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. And then it goes, like, verse 13 then is, therefore my people will go into exile. Right. Which is a common, I mean, Hosea is similar. Right. Sentiment, right? That yeah. You're, you're not doing the things that you ought to be doing. Um, and so God is going to allow you the consequences of your actions. I guess that was really well said. You, you <laughs> wove, the, you 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 really wove right between those mm -hmm. things. Well, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, and, and again, I think very closely tied to the Hosea passage that you preached on yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those that didn't catch that, it's it's worth uh, listening to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and then and then we have this another agricultural or gardening metaphor right in Isaiah 11 that a shoot shall come out of the stump and so Isaiah is not linking these two stories but in my mind when you pair these two stories together sort of the stumps are all that's left after this vineyard has been run over sure yeah. right mm -hmm. and then it lays bare and it lays fallow the wild this takes over, etc., cetera, mm -hmm. etc., cetera. and you have six chapters of woe, 
Um, and then you get to chapter 11, and we get this, that a shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. So there was still something worth saving there. God is still going to use what's left. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's always hope. some remnant. Right. Mm-hmm. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes sees or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness. He shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. So again, we're getting back to the... This remnant will get back on track in terms of not being selfish and caring for the poor. And, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's interesting to me how many of those things... So. So in the CB, CEB, those sort of characteristics, they'll have these characteristics, right? Um, they're listed as a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of planning and strength. And oh, this is counsel and might. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then a spirit of knowledge mm-hmm. and fear of the Lord. And that's, mm-hmm. yeah. It was interesting to me how many of those were... Um, like <laughs> brain focused <laughs> or if that or like in, like a certain sort of intelligence mm-hmm. focused um, like wisdom understanding knowledge here it says planning and as opposed to counsel, to counsel. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what to do with that but it it stood out to me in some sort of a way that the, these are the things I guess that a, that you'll need to use to discern the will of God or or how to how to follow in God's way in some in some way shape or form. Um, that yeah, one was strength, which is you know important for a. I'm assuming that this person is also going to be some sort of political military leader. Well, that's what you assume. In some way, shape, or form. And so strength makes sense right. in that context. And then we Christians come along and, and read our own Messiah back into this and see something distinctive, right? Something yeah. different. Mm-hmm. Um, or we see Jesus as having those characteristics and qualities. Wisdom and understanding, counsel and might. But might in a different way. Not might makes right might, but might... Um, his strength is in his in his weakness and compassion and love, mm-hmm. which ultimately is powerful, but not in the worldly sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, these these two contrasting agricultural metaphors, and I'm like out of my element uh, <laughs> in Nebraska preaching about agriculture. I neither farm nor do I have a garden. Um, I benefit from the farmers and the gardeners a great deal. Uh, but I did actually growing up. I had a garden. Um, I grew up in Flagstaff, Arizona that is built on uh, the edge of a volcano and our soil was awful. It was uh, not rich soil at Mm -hmm. all. And so it required a lot of work to get the soil to produce anything. Yeah. Like you could get zucchini was about the only thing you could produce if you didn't spend a lot of time working on your soil. And so I was, the description of how much work went into preparing the vineyard, I, I could relate to that as a gardener and yeah. learned in my childhood, the more I tended to the soil, the more f- good fruit it would produce. Um, but then there were times where it wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, one of the other things that I thought about related to this is there's a lot of time hidden in these in these stories. That's a really good point. Yeah. Even just, I feel as though it takes a long time. So most of, I don't make wine, but I do make beer. Um, and I think that it takes a long time to like establish a vine mm-hmm. and to even get it to produce fruit. Mm-hmm. Um, and so just all of the, to dig it out, to build the tower, to you know, to choose which strains of of vines you're gonna try to cultivate, 
um, to, to get them established. And even then, and then also in the second passage of shoot to come up out of the stump and establish itself to actually be anything, <laughs> there's a lot of time yeah hidden and you know you're talking about effort and and really conscious and intentional choices in how are we going to try to establish fertile soil right um there's a lot of that you know if you're going to make a movie out of this this would all be a montage and it would condense down to like a minute and a half or two minutes right (laughs) of the movie when really it would be years yeah and and i think I think then when we return to it as a metaphor, we realize that, that God is playing a long game with us too. God is investing mm-hmm. in us long term, mm-hmm. right? It's not an instantaneous thing. God is constantly working with in and through us. Um, occasionally, we don't yield the best fruit. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, uh, and we there are consequences for that, um, as as the Israelites experienced uh, from the invasion of the Assyrians. But that was even that was a long game. I mean, that was not an instantaneous conquering. Right. It was over yeah. a period of decades that uh, that that happened. Um, so that's uh, I think that's a helpful reminder, Damon. Of yeah, as much as uh, it sort of walks through these steps. There's a lot that goes in between all of this and and time. Yeah. Lots and lots mm-hmm. of time. Yeah. And it's not just, well, I stuck a few seeds in the ground and we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll hope for the best. And Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the investment in it. And you kind of started talking about that. The investment in it is, is huge, certainly. And that's God's investment in us, which is really a remarkable thing and really not like any other world religion where we think about a loving God who spends that much time trying to get humanity to get it right. Yeah. Acknowledging when humanity misses the mark, coming back with grace and forgiveness and mercy and trying again. And that's, I mean, the Old Testament narrative arc is is that over and over and over, right? Beginning with Adam and Eve and the fall and then Noah and Mm then uh, (laughs) the Israelites (laughs) And then they're unfaithfulness in the wilderness, and then they get to the promised land, and they're unfaithfulness in the promised land, and it's just God just keeps coming back and doesn't give up, just doesn't give up, and the same is true with each of us. Um, mm-hmm. You know that is that's multiple generations, that's thousands of years of history that I just described there. Uh, but even in our own lives, I'm staring down the barrel of turning another year this this week. And like, okay, in my 45, soon to be 46 years. When you say barrel, you just mean like barrel of candy. Like one of the, like, <laughs> like when you go into the grocery barrel store. Barrel of monkeys, you- <laughs> actually. It's a barrel of monkeys. That was my favorite game as a child growing up. <laughs> That's the kind of barrel. That's the kind of barrel I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Or like, yeah, anyways. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah it's, it's interesting to think of. To think of myself as the thing being cultivated, mm-hmm. um, it's not necessarily always a way that I think that we think of, like to think about ourselves. Um, I'd maybe more prefer to think of myself as the finished product. Um, um, at least now at this phase mm-hmm. of my life, um, when I was 16 to 18, I was probably more than happy to think about myself as the thing in process. Um, and if, I just wonder what that, to encourage ourselves to think of ourselves as we, the thing in process. Um, like what, if, what if we are still like in the construction phase right. of the vineyard? Right. Um, and then that, I don't know. That makes it some sort of a difference, I think. I don't really know. Yeah. It was a first thought, Greg. I don't know. I am, um, yeah, I, I'll close by saying I, I just appreciate the pairing of these two scriptures as, as, as jarring as it was to read them side by side, the, the sort of the juxtaposition and, and the word of hope 
um, yeah. in Isaiah 11. And frankly, the prophet Isaiah is not terribly full of hope, um, particularly not until you get to Second Isaiah. Um, and so it's nice that, that there is some hope. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, and there always, yeah, there always, yeah, there always is, um, yeah, to hold up, the, yeah, the hope. There's always a remnant. There's always some sort of, um, you will be punished, but you will return at some at some point, right. certainly. Mm-hmm. Other odds and ends things that that jumped out to me that I noticed. Okay. That won't probably do any good whatsoever. <laughs> But these are your first thoughts. <laughs> yeah, these are my first thoughts. There's a callback that the 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 the, the this person who emerges from Jesse's mm-hmm. stump um, won't. Uh, they're not going to decide by what they see or hear. In, in the CEB, it's appearances, mm-hmm. uh, and they're also not going to judge by uh, hearsay. Is how it reads in, oh. in here. But that, in my mind, that takes me. That's takes me right back to David's anointing Mm -hmm. that all of Jesse's sons walk by and God says, no, these aren't here because I don't see the way that mortals see and I don't judge the way that mortals judge. So uh, if you got somebody else out there, bring them in because, right. um, So that that I heard an echo in that, the, that he's going to, how does it, uh, with the strike with the rod of his the earth with the rod of his mouth the rod of his mouth and the breath of his lips shall kill the wicked yeah which um, whenever I hear breath I think of creation stories and especially when the breath is going to be destroying things mm-hmm. um, or killing things which and we know this because we just studied Isaiah 40 mm-hmm. <laughs> at a conference also gets reflected in Isaiah 40 that uh the breath of the Lord causes the flowers to wither and the grass to fade. Right. Um, which is an interesting thing. And then a belt. I can, I can think of only two other people whose belts get described that I can think of. Ezekiel. Okay. And John the John Baptist. John the Baptizer. Yep. Right. Um, those are the two other people whose belts I can think of getting described within mm-hmm. the scriptural witness. Mm. Uh, Paul plays with the image of a belt too, not not an individual, but okay with the armor of the Lord. Sure, in, as mm-hmm. in Romans, mm-hmm. um, and it's it's a belt of righteousness. In fact, I think Paul is quoting sure. directly from okay. this Isaiah passage. Yep. So those are just other odds and ends things that. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, but there you go. All right, and that's all we have to say about that. Indeed. So. But um bum. Time to switch gears. Let's do that. Uh, what's happening with the life of the church? What should people be aware of? Uh, we're and you have nine minutes before you have to go to lunch. Not a problem. We're still in our uh, our schedule of our eight thirty contemplative worship service, our nine fifteen Sunday school hour, and our ten thirty traditional worship. Um, we ha- we've had a good crowd in the contemplative worship service the last few weeks, uh, which is great. It's always a good crowd. We've had more people. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah. And so uh, come check that service out if you're interested. Um, it's, it's a meaningful service. We take communion every week in that service. And then our 1030 traditional service. Uh, this week, um, we are going to, uh, we we're still in the process of tallying the pledge cards from the capital campaign. But this Sunday, we will announce the totals from that. Um, and it should be a celebratory moment in the life of our church. And so we mm-hmm. hope you can be there to help us uh, celebrate that time. Uh, it should be really, really good. So... Uh, Sunday school is at 9.15 for all ages. Uh, we've just finished up an adult ed forum uh, taught by Dr. Dan Deffenbaugh, um, who taught about the history of Israel. Uh, we've recorded most of those, and we'll re-record the one that we missed and get those posted to our YouTube page. So if you're interested, check those out. Mm-hmm. I also, this is a side note, I ran into Dan yesterday evening. Mm-hmm. and he, Was he playing trivia? Um, I... Or did he just show up at Steeple and well, I don't know if I want to, to give away trivia played his there. whereabouts. <laughs> but I ran into Dan at an undisclosed <laughs> location yesterday yesterday evening while I was I was doing work. Um, and he said that he would really like to do a follow up 
se- um, series of forums to that to that. So that would be sometime in the winter spring. Brilliant. Um, because he had he said he had a, at least three folks um, ask for more. Yeah. And, and we, so he's like, so if you know, he's like, well, you know, could we if we could do three or you know four? I think he was feeling kind of bashful and like not wanting to take a whole lot of weeks for it. And I said, well, Dan, I mean, that's an entire field of study. So take as many weeks as you want in, my, in, the, in order to like be able to really do it justice. Yeah. And in order to really be able to get people on, on board and, and explain yeah. what's going on. So cool. at any rate. So that the people can look forward to that at some point in the future. Yes. But this week, if you come to the Adult Ed Forum, which I highly recommend, it will be taught by Hannah Jensen Heitman. And this is the first of three forums that she'll be teaching uh, about the cantata that she has written that we will be sharing as part of worship on December the 10th. And so come here, Hannah. She'll talk about, I think, a little bit about the her creative process, how she created the cantata. She'll talk a little bit about the content of the cantata, both musically as well as biblically and liturgically, uh, and even theologically. Um, and so come check that out. It, it's going to be pretty remarkable. The cantata itself is, is really remarkable, and Hannah's reflections on it, I think, will also be very meaningful. So we hope you can join us for that. That's this week starting. We'll take the next week off because it's Thanksgiving and then two more weeks after that. But I uh, hope you can join us for that. Mm-hmm. Um, also this week, Sunday, November 19th, uh, immediately following the 1030 worship service, we will be decorating our church, our sanctuary for Advent and Christmas. Yeah. We call it the hanging of the greens. Immediately. It's very, we're going to be very marking uh-huh. about it. Yes. Into we're going to go from one thing to the next. Just immediately. Like that. Yeah. You'll learn all about that starting in January when we go into a deep dive in the gospel of Mark. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yes, so uh, please plan to stay a few extra minutes after church on Sunday to help us uh, get our lovely church decorated for Advent and Christmas. Um, and I mentioned that we're going to be announcing the, the total of the capital campaign. Uh, if you haven't got your pledge card in yet, you can still do that. Uh, we're still tallying those, so feel free to get those in. Also, please get your uh, pledge cards in for the annual stewardship campaign so we can build a faithful budget for uh, next year as well. Yeah, it really wouldn't be hard to add, an, you know, another million dollars to that to that campaign total. There's you know? lots of projects we could do. That's if we just had zeros. An extra million dollars. Yeah, you know? so. that's not hard math. I, no. <laughs> I could do it. I feel relatively confident. Yeah. So. All right. Is that all? I th- sure. I think so. Should we close with a word of prayer? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Gracious and loving God. As we read these ancient words from the prophets, uh, we ponder how they still apply to us today, and God, they do. Uh, We ask that you would move in our hearts and minds to realize their relevance, to recognize ourselves uh, in these stories, that they are not simply ancient texts, but also a living word that speaks to us today. May we immerse ourselves in your living word and think about how it puts a call on our lives and how we live. Bless, continue to bless uh, our time together as we study your word and uh, bless this, uh, this new phase of the First Thoughts podcast, God, that it may be uh, a source of, of wisdom and insight and humor and hope for those who are listening. In Jesus' holy and loving name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, then, with all those things said and done, until next time, toodaloo.